Coin! I'm a bullet from Andrew Jackson's body, and here are today's Mad Bits. Mt. Gox account hacked. 30 Bitcoin gone. I logged into my computer this morning to find an email saying I had a withdrawal request on Mt. Gox, and immediately knew something was wrong. I never download any unknown software and have malware bytes, so I thought this would never happen to me, but I guess now it has. Just a warning to everyone, be as safe as possible, I guess. I'm assuming I was hacked, targeted somehow via Reddit, because I've noticed for the last few days someone has been trying to change my Reddit password. The IP says the person was from Reno, Nevada. Do you guys think there's anything I can do to possibly get my shit back? Well, fuck my life. Ether High, we're very sorry about your loss. The first rule to avoid being hacked is to activate two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is a new type of security where you use your cell phone to generate unique tokens that prove your identity to the website in addition to that cranky old password that you've probably been typing into dozens of websites and wasn't very secure in the first place. Two-factor authentication is the wave of the future. All you need to do is install the Google Authenticator app or Authy app on your phone and then set it up with your service. I hope that sound is the sound of a thousand accounts getting secured and a thousand more providers like PayPal changing their minds and offering the service immediately. Post haste. Like right fucking now. This brings me to a good point. How does a newbie buy Bitcoin anyway? Well, I'm a newbie too, so all I can offer you is a newbie's perspective. There seems to be two to three major ways to move your money into Bitcoin. Number one, Coinbase. If you link your bank account to Coinbase, it takes a couple of days, then you can buy Bitcoins with cash. But wait, wait, hold on just a second. Sometimes Coinbase offers you the live price, or close to it, but other times Coinbase offers you the option to just buy blind and accept the price six days into the future. And that's when you're getting your coins anyway, because Coinbase needs time to move the money from your bank account, so they take your sweet time getting your coins. But it is the simplest and easiest way. Once you have your coins in Coinbase, you can transfer them to any Bitcoin wallet you want, use them to buy things, or transfer them to Mt. Gox and use them for investing. Gambling. Coinbase seems more like a savings account, a place to invest in Bitcoins and let it sit. I hope someday to have enough Bitcoins in Coinbase to pay off my house, but until then, I'll have to buy low and sell high. And for that, you're going to need a Mt. Gox account. Or another exchange. Yes, yes, I know there are others, but I don't really know who they are, and Bitfloor just closed suddenly, so maybe old ways are the best ways, eh? Of course, the real trick would be to have cash in your Mt. Gox account, so that when the price of Bitcoin went down, you could buy in. That dream seems to be, for the moment, very difficult to fulfill. As a newbie, I set out to Mt. Gox and got an account easily. Then they wanted my driver's license and proof of address to verify my account. This process took two weeks, at least. Two weeks? That don't do me no good. Near Ford Auto, man. Bruh. And sure, I didn't want to send it, but I sure did want to trade in Bitcoin, which gave me plenty of time to set up a Dwalla account. Dwalla, which seems to be exactly like PayPal, also had me go through the linking account dance, which took several days. Well, I hate this place a uh, geographical oddity. Two weeks from everywhere. During which the price of Bitcoin went up and down, but mostly up, and even then, Mt. Gox said they didn't receive my docs, because they said they take PNG, but they probably don't, or their uploader was broken because the hordes of the internet were at their gates demanding their right to trade, and to make money for free, like all their other geek brothers before them. But by that time, I had my Coinbase coins, and it didn't much matter because the price of Bitcoin was already back up to 120, and falling again, then going back up, and then falling, and no one can really tell what's going to happen next. But at least I have some bitcoins, and two-factor authentication, so maybe the hackers will let me keep them. So once again, we're sorry to hear about your loss, Ether High. We hope that this really won't fuck your life. Things will turn around. Also of note, even though it may look like people are making money selling bitcoins on eBay, this is not a good idea, because it seems that PayPal doesn't offer two-step verification, so their accounts are easily hacked, and if you sell a bitcoin on eBay, you'll end up selling to a hacker disguised as a PayPal user. You'll end up feeling like Elmer Fudd. You rascally hackers. Why I oughta... BAM! Zoom! To the moon! This has been Mad 
bitcoins. Mad bitcoins. Mad bitcoins. Bitcoins.